the history of Spider-Man. Spider-Man's real-world history might seem fairly normal, but his impact at the time cannot be overstated. It's hard for modern comic book fans to understand the true impact of Spider-Man. Until Spider-Man's first appearance in 1962, almost every superpower teen was a sidekick. Suddenly, being a teen didn't mean second-tier hero. This would pave the way for groups such as DC's Teen Titans and Marvel's Generation X, and also their New Warriors comic. New Warriors, while a somewhat obscure team, is notable for being the group that inadvertently caused the first Civil War event in Marvel Comics. This means that Spider-Man's creation eventually led to what's regarded to as one of the best films in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, Captain America's Civil War. So it's quite apt that this was the movie that introduced Spider-Man into the MCU. Spider-Man, Real World Origins. Spider-Man was created by industry legends Stan Lee and Steve Ditko back in the early days of Marvel Comics. Lee, noting the success of Fantastic Four, felt it was time to introduce another superhero to the Marvel roster. Stan Lee states in his autobiography, Excelsior, The Amazing Life of Stan Lee, that he was inspired by watching a spider crawl up a wall, but he also says that he's told that story so many times he no longer remembers if it's true or not. Lee says he chose the name Spider-Man because he wanted the character to be able to grow into adulthood without having to change his name, and he added the hyphen to differentiate his character from a character from one of Marvel's competitors, DC Comics. The character, of course, was Superman. His name also begins with an S, and he also wears a red and blue costume. Interestingly, Ditko originally proposed a purple and orange costume for Spider-Man, but that particular design didn't stick. That's a joke, isn't it, Dad? Yeah, buddy, that's a joke. Marvel's higher-ups didn't think Spider-Man would be very popular, but they allowed the Lee Ditko creation to appear in a final issue of their sci-fi supernatural anthology comic series, Amazing Adult Fantasy. The series was slightly renamed for the final issue, and so Spider-Man's first appearance was in the Amazing Fantasy number 15. After checking the sales for the comic, Marvel was surprised to find that it was one of their best-selling comics, so they gave the green light to a Spider-Man solo title. This new series was called The Amazing Spider-Man, presumably in reference to his first appearance in Amazing Fantasy. It seems strange, looking back. The character was introduced in a spooky sci-fi anthology comic, and then went on to become one of the most beloved comic superheroes ever. Yo, this would be like if one of the episodes from the Black Mirror spawned an entire franchise that lasted 80 years and was still going strong. Spider-Man, in-universe origins. Bearing this in mind, we'll skip ahead to the point where he's already Spider-Man and mention a few of his more formative experiences. The first is the death of his first love, Gwen Stacy. While most people believe that she was killed by Green Goblin, it was actually Spider-Man that killed her. Green Goblin threw her from a bridge, and Spider-Man cast a web line at her to save her. Sadly, this resulted in her death. No matter how many people he saved, Spider-Man would never forgive himself for this. Not long after this, there was a running gag about his Aunt May trying to introduce him to their next-door neighbor's niece, Mary Jane Watson. This went on for some time until they finally met and Peter fell in love with her at first sight. He eventually proposed to her, but was rejected, so he moved on. He became romantically involved with Felicia Hardy, also known as the punishly named Cat Burglar, Black Cat. Around this time, Spider-Man gained a new black costume, at which point he started acting a little more aggressive and altogether unfriendly way. He'd soon discover this was because the suit itself was actually a living being, an entity from a race of alien parasites known as symbiotes who fed on negative emotion who would go on to bond with someone else, ultimately becoming the villain, anti-hero, Venom. Not long after that, he proposed to Mary Jane Watson again. This time, she said yes. He then found out that he was a clone when he was approached by the real Peter Parker. Taking his late uncle's first name and his Aunt May's maiden name, he went by the name Ben Riley. He began using the name Scarlet Spider and created another spider suit, introducing the hoodie as part of the Spider-Man aesthetic. Fear not, though, for it turns out that our boy Ben was indeed the original Peter Parker. After a while, Spider-Man would join in the massive comic crossover event, Civil War. 
on the registration side, resulting in his secret identity being made public. He and Aunt May moved into Stark Tower, mainly to help keep Aunt May safe. Nonetheless, his beloved Aunt May was killed by an assassin hired by the crime lord Kingpin. Peter, having exhausted all other options, asks Mephisto for help, who offers him a deal. Mephisto agrees to bring Aunt May back to life and also wipe everyone's memory of Spider-Man's secret identity but it will cost Peter his marriage to Mary Jane Watson. Peter accepts these terms. After various adventures, Spider-Man would then find out that he was actually given his powers by a spider totem and go on a literally epic adventure with other Spider-Man themed characters. Peter has always represented geeks in general and his rise to power is analogous to the rise in power of geek culture. Once considered lowly nerds, it could be argued that they now rule the world at least when it comes to technology and how it's used. Well guys, I gotta go for now, but until next time, love the geek. Peace.